I think of it as you get this big block of marble, and, and that's your first draft, a big shapeless thing. And then you start chipping away at it, and that's your second draft. Chip again, and that's your third draft, fourth draft. What happened with the first spec script that you've ever written? TV oh, spec. I came out to L.A. Uh, as a playwright, and I got my agent out here, and he looked at all my published books, and he went, these are fantastic. Nobody out here cares about your little books. <laughs> I said, what? And he said, you need to write a spec script. And he explained what that was. So we, we said, well, I don't know, what should we write? And he said, uh, well, I know head of the class is looking for people to write their show, so do you, why don't you write ahead of the class? I said, all right. So we went home, we wrote ahead of the class script, which I thought to this day is probably the best head of the class script they would have ever seen. Handed it into the agent. He read it and he went, yeah, it's okay. Didn't make me laugh. And I was like, it didn't make you laugh. That's all we do, you know? So I went home with Jane and we said, okay, we're writing another one. And we picked a show called Slap Maxwell. It was Dabney Coleman. I don't think it only lasted a season, but it was a guy having a midlife crisis and it was a hilariously funny show and he was great. So we wrote a really outrageous Slap Maxwell show. And we wrote it in 24 hours. And it was basically an F you to my agent to say, oh, you don't think we're funny? Then read this, you know? And he read it the next day and we sat in the office and while he read it and he went, you'll be making six figures in, uh, in three months. And he got us, our, that was the new heart job. He got us the new heart job. We had new heart or Murphy Brown. We didn't know which one oh, we wanted wow. to take, wow. but new heart had 22 committed episodes and Murphy Brown only had 13. So we went, Oh, 22, let's go there. And I'm glad we did. And did he at least laugh? Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, he did. Oh, God, he laughed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you knew that, yeah. that you had a winner yeah. on your hands. Okay. I get asked about spec scripts all the time. And um, when what people don't realize when they're first starting out and they have to write a spec script is you're competing against thousands of other people writing a spec script. You, everything you've got has got to be put into that one script. Don't rush it because people are only going to read you one time. You know, if I get a script and it's like, eh, and then I, a year later, I get a script from the same guy. When I already read him, you know, that one script has to have everything in it. You have to know the show. You have to know the characters. You have to know how to write jokes. You have to know story. You have to know how to write a button on the end of a scene. You have to know uh, editing. Because um, when I'm putting a, a staff together, which I haven't done in a while, but when you're putting a staff together, you want somebody who can write jokes, you want somebody who can write story, you can want somebody who has some connection to the topic of the show, you know, if it's a medical show, you want someone with a medical something or other in their, in their past. So you need to cram it all into the same script. It, and um, some of the strangest uh, spec scripts I ever read uh, were somebody wrote, this is a long time ago, but it was well after Mary Tyler Moore show had already gone off the air. Somebody wrote a Mary Tyler Moore spec script and it was fantastic. And it really catches your eye, but it had to be good. But, um, but you only get one shot at the, at the script, so it's got to have everything in it. Write it, let it sit. Don't rush. Don't rush, because if you rush, you know, the best thing for me when I'm writing is to write it fast and then let it sit for a week or two. Because when you pick it back up, the, the problems are glaring. You'll see it a mile, you know, and then you fix it. To me, when you're writing a script, I think of it as you get this big block of marble, and, and that's your first draft, a big shapeless thing. And then you start chipping away at it, and that's your second draft. Chip again, and that's your third draft, fourth draft. And uh, eventually you see what it's supposed to be, and you can fine tune it to make it exactly what it should be. But I always tell people, the first draft, kick it out. Just write it. Get it over with. Because the easiest thing to do is fix something, I think. Um, so a lot of times we would get three weeks when we were staff writers. They'd give you three weeks to write a first draft. And Jane and I would write it in two days and go, okay, what do you want to do with the rest of the time? I don't know. Let's go to the movies or something. You know? <laughs> and then we come back and fix it. Um, and I, whenever I, when I was running my own shows, I would give people a week to write the first draft. You know, just get, get it out. And then you can fine tune it. And I think that makes it, it also helps in television because time is always a problem, you know. 
you uh, when you write a pilot you get could be six months to write a pilot and your reward for that is you get to do the same job in a week a week at a time instead of six months at a time when you go to series and uh, I also say <laughs> I also say uh, ours is the only job where you spend six weeks or let's say a month writing a script and then for the rest of the the week when you're shooting it you have different groups of people telling you how you did it wrong that's our job <laughs> and you have to sort of rise above that um, when I first came out to LA um, I met with uh, Bob what was the name Sam Bobrick he had written um, a couple of plays murder at the Howard Johnson's and those kind of shows comedies on Broadway and he was running some show out here and we met with him and he said you're a playwright right and I said yeah he said well, let me explain the difference between a playwright and TV writer and a playwright is the top of the pyramid and everybody works to please the vision of the playwright now you're writing for television you're the blueprint that's it and it took me a while to get used to the idea that that was it when you're the showrunner it's different then it's your show but when you're a writer on somebody else's staff I remember on Newhart actually the first script we wrote I forget somebody came in the door and I had them say hello you know and in the rewrite room they, they changed it to hi I was like why is hi better than hello what you know and I, I was incensed that they're changing our words Jane I don't like that and uh, but the job of a staff writer whether you know better than the showrunner or not your job is to imitate the writing of the showrunner so everybody sounds the, so all the episodes sound the same and um, the, the first few rules I heard in the writer's room were um, if we're on page five and you have a note on page four keep your mouth shut we've already passed <laughs> like oh okay if you have a joke that's better than the one the executive producer had keep your mouth shut <laughs> okay got it so, but when you when you're running your own show, and I, it, I've I've seen it when I've uh, members of my staff, I can see when I change something of theirs, I can see them, you know, looking looking at somebody <laughs> like mine was better. It's like well, anyway. And forgive me, what is a button at the end of a scene? A little joke moment. Okay, interesting. A lot of TV shows now don't have it. Sometimes it it, it almost looks like they turn the camera off in the middle of a scene now because it just sort of stops but the, there was always a comic button at the end of a, of a sitcom scene oh, okay so in new heart let's say the one of the brothers one of the Daryls came in or and something you know triggered Bob or they'd something. walk out the door he'd say something funny and that would be the okay. button you know that kind of thing okay interesting and you think they don't do it now just for time's sake because we're used to a faster pace I think what's happened now is well the sitcom world is, where is it by the way <laughs> where is it you know uh, you do have Abbott Elementary which is a good comedy show but you don't have in front of the audience three camera four camera comedies anymore they just they're not around um, they're filmed like that sometimes but there's usually no audience there when you're doing it um, the um, I, th I don't know when it changed probably changed around the time of the office which is brilliant and was brought back more one camera comedies um, the office also brought back uh, not brought back introduced basically uh, where writers could be the actors too you know we could you had you were separate camps for years you know there were times we would write shows and there's a role, role for Jane I'd write in and Jane would write a role for me and we were told no no you're the writers it's like well her character's sitting at a desk no one's gonna it's easy to rehearse you know no no you're the writers okay the office came out and everybody in the cast were writing and not everybody but um, and I think that opened the door to a lot of very good work from other people.